Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are all of you today? I hope the answer was well. Um, somebody brought to my attention, what if I say I'm having a miserable day, Jordan, and you always say, great. Well, I always want to assume that everybody's having a good start to their day or that watching this may be the first thing is the start to their day and that maybe I could put you in a good mood. So fault me for thinking positive on that one, but I hope you're having a great day. So many of you may know that normally I have my videos offset, which means that I film them a couple of weeks in advance. Well, knowing that I was going to go to Venice and knowing that I was going to go to Carnival, um, I decided to take a trip before that that you guys haven't seen. And you're actually going to see that this coming Monday. So all of that was filmed about three weeks ago because I wanted Carnival to be timely. I wanted it to be um, the same time that it was happening. And because of everything that happened, I guess it's a really good thing that I did it that way. Otherwise, people would be very confused um, two and a half weeks from now when all these videos started showing. But I just wanted you to know that the day that I'm filming this video is actually yesterday. It's Friday. So you're probably watching this on Saturday. Well, you're definitely watching this on Saturday, but I filmed it on Friday. So um, I made it back fine. There were no, um, no quarantines, nothing out of the ordinary traveling. Um, I know people are probably wondering what happened coming back in. That's what happened. I did actually get stopped by customs though. And um, let me tell you, it had nothing to do with coming from Venice. It had nothing to do with uh, the virus that's happening right now. Um, a random officer walked by and looked at my necklace, this necklace that I'm wearing. He looked at my necklace and he walks up to me and he says, where did you get that necklace? I said, Mexico. He goes, how long ago? I go, um, like, like a month ago. And he goes, we're at in Mexico. And I go, uh, Guadalajara. He said, how much you pay for it? I said, like the equivalent of like six bucks. And he goes, it looks a lot like ivory to me. I'm going to need to pull you aside and I'm going to need to test that. Can you take that necklace off? So they take my necklace off. He goes, did they tell you what this is made of? I go, well, the guy said it was made of bone, but um, I assumed it was probably just plastic and he starts doing some tests on it and everything. And he goes, no, it's, yeah, it is bone. But he said, he was so skeptical. He was looking at me so skeptically. He goes, in fact, at one point he even said, he goes, how much you say you paid for this? I said, like, I think a hundred pesos or so probably five or six bucks. And he goes, you sure it wasn't 6,000? I'm like, oh man. So, um, they did pull me aside for that. But other than that, I made it home. Okay. And today we are going to go out and do a vlog before all the vlogs that you see on this upcoming road trip. Amy was supposed to come, but unfortunately she got so sick. Um, she had got food poisoning from Postmates last night, so she's not going to come, but our pal Scott Michaels has been watching Ja. I'm going to go pick up Ja and Scott Michaels, and we're going to go out vlogging together today. So uh, go subscribe to Scott's channel, Dearly Departed. He's working on his YouTube very hard now, and he also does the Dearly Departed tours here in Hollywood. And I figured, you know, with what we're going to do today, Scott's like the perfect person to go out with. So Days with Jordan the Lion, Dearly Departed, and Ja will begin right now. What's up, man? Hi! Wow, you're excited. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that smile. Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to head off. We're going to start at the cemetery today. We're going to go to Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills. So unfortunately today we're going to be starting out our vlog here in the cemetery because I just I felt like maybe this was the best place to remember her. Um, her grave is here along with her mother Maria. Judith was just 10 years old when she was both her and her mother were killed by her father Joseph. Let me tell you a little bit about the background of this family and what ended up happening to poor Judith Barcy. First off you have to say a big thank you to the fans because you can see that they were both killed here in 1988, but they didn't have headstones. 
They were in unmarked graves here until 2004 when fans paid to have these headstones put here. Now, Judith was the beautiful little actress that was, she started out doing commercials. She actually, her mother from the time that Judith was born, her mother was dead set on her daughter being an actress and gave her etiquette lessons. And then at the age of five, when they were at a skating rink, they were filming a commercial. The commercial people just noticed Judith and next thing I know, she was in an agent's office. Within one meeting, she had an agent and she was out making commercials. She ended up doing 70 commercials. She also was in St. Elsewhere and Cagney and Lacey and she was on Growing Pains, Punky Brewster. But a lot of people probably know her most for Jaws the Revenge or for two things that she never ended up getting to ever see where she did the voices for Land Before Time and All Dogs Go to Heaven. In fact, after she passed away, they wrote a song in her honor or in her memory for All Dogs Go to Heaven. Now, unfortunately, what ended up happening was that Judith and Maria were extremely close. They, they said Maria was never not by Judith's side, but her husband, Joseph, Judith's father was maybe a candidate for all-time worst father. Um, he was a man who was of Hungarian descent. Both he and Maria both were. He fled the Soviet, well, he fled Hungary because the Soviet Union was um, coming in to take over in 1956. They both actually fled at that time, but he went to Italy, met a woman, had um, a love affair with her, married her and had two children. And then they moved to New York City. He was an extremely abusive drunk and ended up causing the family to run away from him. They, they took off to Arizona to escape life with Joseph Barsi. Now, Joseph Barcy did not allow that to happen. He ended up following them all the way to Arizona, tried to make a reconciliation, which he did, and continued to abuse the family where finally his wife filed for divorce and Joseph ended up moving to California and started frequenting a diner where Maria was working and Maria had just been divorced, was really in a low point and they found solace in each other. They would spend hours talking, getting to know each other and eventually they decided to get married and very shortly thereafter, young Judith was born. And Judith had all the charm in the world and like I said, her mother was dead set on her being a, an actress and Maria was the prototype of the stage mom. They said that she was there all the time, always helping her daughter, always making sure her daughter was prepared. And like I said, they were also extremely, extremely close. They did everything together. But Joseph became a drunk and became abusive with this family as well. And they just started to distance themselves from him. Now, he was, he was a real piece of work because this guy at one time would uh, be so jealous of Judith's success that at her birthday party, he would follow her into the kitchen and grab her by her ponytail and throw her on the ground. Um, he was, he inflicted so much mental abuse on Judith where he would tell Judith things like, um, you know, someday I'm gonna kill your mother or, you know, things like that. Or, or one time when she got the role in Jaws Revenge, she was actually packing her clothes and her father came in, locked the door, and put a knife to her throat and said, if you don't come back, I'm gonna kill you and your mother. I mean, this is, that's the kind of fear that she was living in. And, um, you know, to the friends, Judith never let on what was going on. And then eventually, um, you know, she started acting when she was about five, but as she got to about seven or eight, people started to notice something was wrong and eventually she was sent to a counselor and within just one meeting of the counselor, the counselor called Child Protective Services and reported Judith as an abused child. Uh, you know, they had had various, various things where um, Joseph Barcy had told Maria, if you ever try and leave me, and, and like he showed her all these gas cans in the house, said if you ever try and leave me, I'll burn this house down. And this is a family who at one point was living in a, an apartment because they were so poor, but because of what Judith was earning, um, she was making up to like $100,000 a year. They were able to get a house. And the first thing that he did was put a spiked fence around the house in case anybody would ever try and escape, basically. So he was kind of a nut and he basically inflicted pain on them so long and unfortunately 
even though they got child protective services involved at one point um, you know the caseworker was just so overloaded they never really got around to, to doing anything about it and Maria claimed to the uh, caseworker that she was going to get a divorce and that she had it under control so they basically just dropped any pursuit they had of going after Joseph so Maria was under so much mental abuse that she would constantly talk about it on sets to the other mothers and they and they said like people that were part of the crew almost thought it was like crying wolf because they said it was so common for her to talk about how scared she was you almost couldn't take it seriously but that's how bad it was she got an apartment away from their house just to take Judith to during the afternoon where they could have a little peace and quiet. And eventually one of the things that ended up happening was Joseph met a new woman, started showering her with gifts, and wasn't shy about letting Maria know about it. So Maria decided, well, I'm gonna quit cleaning the house and hopefully if it turns into a complete pigsty, he'll finally leave. And um, even he had had two daughters before this marriage. Um, one of those daughters was around um, in Judith and Maria's life and was terrified for both of them and said, you know, I couldn't believe it when I walked in the house. It was, a, it was an absolute pig pen. Um, they hadn't cleaned anything. And when I asked Maria why, she, she flat out said, this is the only way I can get rid of him. So they tried to maintain a normal life for Judith. She. Um, when she wasn't on set, she attended a public school and she had normal friends, but her friends were terrified to come to the house because um, some of them had come to the house looking for Judith before and um, drunken father had made really discouraging remarks about Judith when they asked. And um, even the neighbors right next to their house at various times had told uh, Maria and Ju Judith that they could come live with them. And Maria never took them up on that offer. In fact, she would decline. And then some would say the reason that she didn't want to go through and um, prosecute because when she one day she had called the cops because uh, Joseph had punched her in the face and then ended up not pursuing it was because she was afraid that it would be a setback to Judith's career and everything that they had worked for. Now Judith tried to maintain a normal life and she was happy around her friends and they said in, in school she wouldn't ever talk about it but one day at an audition her, her agent said that something came over Judith and she just she became so emotional that she couldn't even speak um, she, nothing that you could understand anyway and she said she knew by Judith's demeanor that there was something very very wrong going on and Maria decided to get um, an apartment and to start the proceedings to divorce Joseph um, at one point she was moving boxes to the apartment and he followed her and confronted her about it and she said that she was moving them for a friend and eventually she decided nobody really seems to know why but she decided that um, she was not going to get the apartment because she felt that that house was her and Judith's house and she wanted Joseph to leave now this was I mean if you can imagine a, a 10 year old what she's been going through having her life threatened by her father they you know I told you that he cornered her and said if you don't come back from that filming I, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically end your and your mother's life after that filming the first thing that they did was Judith and Maria were a little scared um, and they had told people on set they were scared to go home so they ended up going to Maria's brother and visiting him in New York and Joseph called the house and asked to speak to Judith and when Judith came on the phone he said do you remember what I told you was gonna happen if you didn't come home and the next day they boarded a flight and came home Judith Barcy was so scared at one point and was so mentally abused that they said that she was uh, had developed a nervous habit of pulling out all of her eyelashes. It's really great to see that they finally have headstones, you know, after all those years. It's so sad, so sad to know their life was ended by their father, the person who's supposed to be the protector. Now one of the saddest parts to this was that for years Joseph had been telling his friends that someday he was going to kill Maria. He, was, he said, I w I'm going to do it. Told the neighbors, someday I'm going to kill her. I mean, it couldn't have been more blunt and yet nothing was ever done. And one day he said it to one of his friends and he said, well, what are you gonna do with 
what about you know your daughter who's going to raise her and he said well i guess i'll have to include her in that and one day he found out that um, maria had filed for divorce he decided to wait till judith and maria had went to bed and in their three bedroom house he changed the course of all their lives so we're going to now uh, head out to that house in canoga park it's kind of interesting to see that where they're buried right here is just overlooking Warner Brothers where you can imagine Judith would have been working in the future of her life had she not had the unfortunate events of that day. Scott, what do you think? This is like father of the year material, right? This guy, Joseph Barsi, yeah, just what unbelievable. A, what an arrogant, insecure fuck and pardon, you know, but no, I mean, he just was. He was just a nasty, bully, awful alcoholic i mean have to ch have to beat children and wives and I mean, what is that it's yeah, mental illness maybe so i don't give a shit because you don't really care when you see a fist flying at you with the you know you're worried about the fist not with not the philosophy or the psychology behind it it sucks he's a horrible person and uh it's not nice to say that kind of a surprisingly open freeway today all right we've made our way up into canoga park we should be there pretty soon. It was not right off the freeway or anything, so her family definitely put her kind of in a secluded area where she could be a normal little girl when she wasn't on set. Said her mom was big on making sure she had a normal life and went to a normal elementary school. Right here at the Nevada Avenue Elementary School, just two blocks away from her house was her elementary. up here on the left on this corner. So here's the home. On July 25th, um, Joseph waited till the mother and daughter went to bed and went in with a gun and shot Judith in her sleep, which woke up um, his wife. She came down the hallway, they had a struggle, and then he shot her and left them there for the next two days while he wandered around the inside of the house. And then a neighbor heard an explosion two days later and um, saw smoke coming out of the house. And they found out that he had um, put gas all over the house and blew up the house and had shot himself in that garage right there. Just an absolutely sad ending. This poor girl had no idea that it was coming. Her mother had no idea it was coming that night. And... Uh, just to know they were laying in there for two days. I guess even her agent called looking for Judith and the Father Joseph said, I don't know where they went, they left in a black car. I was just here to say goodbye. You can see outside that this is still the same spiked fence that it was when they lived here, except it was painted white at that time and the house is completely different. It was white at the time too. So we're here at Dearly Departed because Scott told me they're keeping the gift shop open until they move out. So if you wanted anything, come buy it now. But he actually has a box of things I'm going to use for a vlog coming up that he's going to hook me up with now. Let's go see what it looks like inside. Going in. There's Pugsley. He's still here. Most merchandise actually 25% off. Most books 40 Look at that, you can come get Scott's documentaries. John, what are you sitting outside in the sun for? We just got you some water, come on in. So if you come in and see Terry while the store's still open, you can meet someone who is not only in Carrie, but she was also in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That famous scene in the, uh, the biker bar, she's the blonde biker chick. Who is the other person in there that's really famous Sandra as well? Sandra Peterson, Elvira herself. Absolutely. So come say hi to Terry while you're in town. And Mae West. And Ja. You can see all the cases are being torn apart now. All right, Scott, thank you for being a part of this vlog and going hanging out with me today. Give your channel a shout out because you're now doing some really great YouTube vlogs and I want people to be able to go and check them out. Thanks, it's, it's, it's Dearly Departed Online on YouTube and, uh, and I'm doing my best to, to, uh, to upload some really fun things. So, uh, so thanks for including me, thanks for <laughs> helping me out and, uh, and I appreciate you guys who come to visit on, on YouTube. Dearly Departed Online. Excellent. 
What do you say, Hot Rod? Can we call it a day? Thank you for accompanying us to the cemetery and out to Canoga Park, John. And to Dearly Departed, you were part of that whole thing today. Good to have you back, huh? I guess good to have me back, huh? All right, my friends, we're going to call it a day. I want to uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Ken Flotten, Chris Barlow, and Rhonda Hockman for becoming my newest Patreons. And um, God, rest in peace, Judith Barcy. I mean, that's one of the most horrible stories I ever heard, and I didn't want you to be forgotten, even though that's a really horrible thing to think about. All the wonderful things that she did while she was alive, and just thinking about, you know, what she was secretly having to live with. Shouldn't be forgotten. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all later, and thank you to my friend Presley for letting me use her song for this vlog once again. Have a great night. Goodbye. Images of us starting to rust, broken in pieces.